Testing, let me get these levels straight. Testing, good afternoon. And I believe everything is on and working. So I will say good afternoon. This is Caitlin Redding, breaking down the news. Riverwestradio.com, struggling with some, and let's see, headphones in the background here. There we go. Let me do some level checks now. Okay, we have a, quite a day going on, and let me get some things adjusted here for everybody. Okay, okay, welcome to Friday. Oh my goodness, we're at December 7th already. Can you imagine how mo fast this month is going? It's almost as if we're traveling downhill. I'm Caitlin Redding. I'm here today sitting in by myself. Uh, I'm hoping to have a live call and interview a little bit later on. And Michael Wordsworth is taking the day off. So today we're going to be covering things like, well, if we have time, we're going to get to the fiscal cliff. It's a wonderful term we've been hearing a lot of this past week especially since Tuesday, fiscal cliff. Why doesn't that sound like fun? So if we have time, we will talk t about that. I'm going to be playing an interview with Richard Brophy and Zach Z of New Society of Anarchists. And then hopefully we'll be talking from Ke or with Kelly, excuse me, from No More Victims 2. That's the number two. I also have received emails from different people who listen, who have forwarded articles to me. So at some point in time, I'm definitely going to have to spend a few minutes and read the articles that I was sent to let you guys know what's on other people's minds. I have a story here. Uh, this is an article by someone who's been, uh, actually this is a website that's been recommended to me. This is Mercola.com. And the header is Take Control of Your Health. And it says since 19, I think, 97, yes. And this, is again, is submitted by Dr. Mercola. He submitted this this past October 2012. And this is, will boosting your vitamin D levels help prevent colds or not? So I will get to that later on. So as you can imagine, it's um, been sitting here a while for me to get to. Also, I have something from the Star Tribute. Uh, which is about the uh, frack wells and the sand mining that they're expecting to start in the Mississippi River. I mean, I'm sorry, the Wisconsin River, just before it uh, merges with the Mississippi River in Bridgeport. If you're familiar with where Prairie du Chien is, on the north-south highway there, Bridgeport is the small community that exists just before you go into actually Prairie du Chien. It's where the BP is, where the uh, boat launch is for those who canoe the Wisconsin and fish the Wisconsin River. Down in those ports, that would be the last, the very last uh, launch site before you actually come to the Mississippi River and then you can launch from the Mississippi. And I also have something uh, from Let's see, I can't find out who they are. <laughs> it says share this and it doesn't tell me who they are. Hmm, anyway, the article is titled Giant Leap Backward for Wisconsin Waters. This tells you a little bit about what's going on. These are things that we have not been hearing about and this is not a good thing. You people should be hearing about these things in the mainstream news and they're not being shared with us. So. I'm still trying to find out where the Star Tribune is published. It must be pretty close in the area. And that's about frack, frack wells, fracking, and sand mines. Uh, I have another article that I was forwarded from Mercola.com, and this one is called Antibiotic Alert, the drug the doctor ordered could cause deadly side effects. Again, from October, even closer than the last one. And finally, I have something that I found that was interesting in December issue of Psychology Today. It is the, uh, if you, it, it is an article about um, how we uh, judge 
people by their face within the first second or two of seeing them and it uh it's it's a very interesting article a few pages long but it uh it has some interesting very interesting points in it that i think will ring true for most people so let me get us set up here I'm going to go ahead and play that interview for you with Richard Brophy and Zach C. This was recorded. Well, of course, I'll tell you in the recording, but this was my first introduction, actually, to a type of, I, I guess I'm going to call it activism, that involves spoken word. And it is something that has gotten so large that it has actually become the attraction between the sets of the bands playing at hardcore events, punk rock, that kind of thing. Y maybe people are not familiar with the political activism that goes on in the hardcore scene. You know, it's a lot of people talking intelligently to other people. Uh, it's a, an it's alternative pathway, and, and I guess they're looking for more open minds and educating more open minds. So let me see if I can bring the volume up on that, and we'll try to listen to that now or as soon as the old-fashioned machine cranks up here, we'll try to get that going. Any time now. Okay, well, we have a screen. <laughs> oh my goodness, we might need to try this another way. Okay. November 10th, 2012, O'Keeffe's Port of Hamburg, South Howell Avenue, Milwaukee. After Dan Lazzi's appearance at Hardcore for Hunger 5, I had a chance to talk to both Richard Brophy, band member and promoter, and Zach C., organizer, about their innovative ideas and approach to activism. Today, we have with us Richard Brophy, who is a musician, and a self-proclaimed promoter yes. who has, uh, as we learned in a previous interview, was the person who actually gave Dan Lazzi his start. Yes. And we are also privileged to have Zach, and I don't know your whole name. Zach Z is fine. Zach Z, and you are also in a band. Yes, NSOA. NSOA. And uh, you also know Dan Lazzi and gave him an opportunity to speak or you gave him a platform. So I think that one of the things that's interesting is how the heck did you end up with Dan Lazzi, of all people? We played a show down in Springfield, and he was a part of that show. Okay. And that's when we met, exchanged contacts. Then last April, was that last April? Yes. Last April he was coming up here, and we were already on tour. <laughs> Well, so uh, at the time, my wife Anna was working at Brew Cafe, and he was looking for a date, and we were able oh. to pull that off. So, so that's how he got that, here. Then his Brew the Cafe. First, that was the first time I helped him with the show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit before we started the interview, you were kind of talking about the fact that you have kind of a fascination with the spoken word. It's something that intrigues and interests mm -hmm. I you. Enjoy it. Yep. And you feel that your audience is also equally intrigued and entertained by by this. Yeah, I don't think spoken word in hardcore is anything new though. I mean, so it's always been there. It's just no one knew it's coming. It's been like fucking Henry Rollins for the last fucking 35, fucking 40 years. Sorry. That's okay. 35 <laughs> years, 40 years, whatever, you know. So it's like, it, I think it's great to hear someone new, you know. To Did you say fornication? Yes, he yeah, used the twice. word. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Just like a sailor. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. But it's okay. I think it's great to hear someone new because... You know, you can only hear, you know, one guy's opinion so many, so much. You Had know. you heard Logic before speak? He did a little bit. I heard some yeah, of his. Yeah, he actually did a show with us in Springfield as well, which is where. He's from Decanter, I believe. He He's oh, from no, no Victims. Yeah, from uh, Springfield. No More Victims. No More Victims. Yes. Yeah, that's where <laughs> No More Victims is centered, is uh, Springfield, Illinois, but on that April tour that we did 
when Dan came up here, we were down in Springfield the night before he played up here, and uh, No More Victims had opened that show as well. So. Okay, so when you tour with your band, do you have people that you can contact locally, or you try to bring people that you've heard with you? How do you do this? Uh, sometimes we go out alone. We have toured with like DRI and uh, MOD and Raw Power and stuff, but we were on Warp Tour and shit in '96. But like independently, we do it. We do it like most everything is independent. We've been like a DIY band since fucking since we started. So it's like. And you said you've been doing this about 20 years. I started this band this band not like I'm in not, its incarnation cur right, currently I'm not like okay. the guy that's been in 50 bands throughout the 20 years this band has existed this band has existed since oh jesus i'm old man 1989 is, <laughs> is when this band officially started as a band and then in 1994 is when we released our first for CD. First release, yeah. Okay. Was, well, it, at first it was a tape, and then it was a CD. So an EP, I think, or something right. of that it sort. Was like okay. Six songs or whatever, but at that time it was like all grunge here in, in Milwaukee. There's never like uh, I don't want to say it. I love Milwaukee, so it's like. Well, you have to say, you have to tell the truth. I kind of have a bad reputation in Milwaukee, in my opinion, just because I do say too much, but... <sighs> well, chances are other people know the truth as well. Oh, yeah, for sure they know so. the truth, but, like, I don't know, back when we started, you know, a lot of the old school guys that, like, were doing underground bands, and I'm not knocking them, you know, I fucking, my roots are my roots, and I love you know all the, all the musicians that I've watched as a kid and all the bands I've played with have inspired me throughout you know I mean it's impossible not to be inspired by the people around me sure so you know I'm not knocking anybody but when like the grunge scene hit all those bands kind of bailed on the new bands so it, we kind of had to pick up the pieces and like Milwaukee is so into like commercial crap that when we lost that kind of you know the root of the people that started it in in at least in milwaukee not started it but period. started the scene here right, right. designated kinda, vibe right they, <sighs> they were kind of decided they That's were right. they were done they i don't know if like well i'm sure a lot of people went through shit you know i know like we've lost so many people through the last 20 years but they, I felt like, you know, when we started, a lot of those bands were just done, and it was like trying to find a new heavy bands was like impossible when everybody was trying to be hippies and shit. So it was like we just had to, we had no choice but to do it ourselves, you know. Yeah. Find a basement, rent a hall, do something, put up. We used to put up ads before the internet, you know. You yeah. have to put up like Posters. your ad on the billboard in whatever store. And but you've always had look for other bands and try to get you know. You've always had the audience though. The audience has never left you. It just got to be harder to contact That's, them. Well, or do you think that the audience I left I you? I think. I don't know. I think that the scene has gone through very strong times. And then, like, people grow up and people move on and people start to hate each other and their friendship wasn't as strong as their pill addiction or whatever the hell makes them lose their mind and not talk to anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so when that group of kids hits 21 or 22 and they find, like, they get drunk and whatever, they just, they find out life isn't living at home anymore. Right. You know, so, like, their values change. And the things inside them change or maybe they start coming to shows and they're beating up people or they're the ones getting beat up you know it's like things like that 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 ruin the heart of everything you know sure. like you got you can go like two years and everybody's real strong and real tight and everybody knows everyone at the shows and 
then all of a sudden, like, two people start not talking, and then it's like ten people don't talk to each other anymore, and then it's like those ten people don't come to that side of town for the shows anymore, and now they only go to this clicks, you know, so everybody goes in their own click. And that's like where Milwaukee is right now. There's the east side click, and there's the north side click, and there's like you know the straight edge click and the skinhead click and whatever and then there's like the metal click and then there's like us that want like what we had where it didn't matter if you were skinhead straight edge metal head punk rock it never mattered mm -hmm. until like <laughs> 2000 hit then all of a sudden it was like this fashion show or whatever but i don't know but you, you stayed know, true just, through all this, you stay I, I true. I stay true to myself. I, I don't know. I, maybe a part of me doesn't really care to believe anymore. Maybe you know. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm bitter and fucking angry too. So it's like. <laughs> but then, how do you get band to come? It's very easy for me to feel like you know, if I'm abandoned, you know, this is the thing I, I thought was something that. You know, anybody could was supposed to be able to come to an underground show. Anybody, it didn't matter. You, you know, there were people here that have never gone to a show like this to mm -hmm. them, ever was, in their lives. Yeah, this was fascinating and for it's me. it's like, <laughs> there was a time when that's the, like, that was the idea. It didn't matter. You could all come and not get fucked with. But now it's like people, People that don't have an identity come and cling to people that do have identities is the problem. So this type of person gravitates towards the kid that dresses like a skinhead. He might not know what the fuck a skinhead is or what it means, and he probably walks the fence between do I hate ethnic people or am I just a skinhead, working class guy? You know, so that group all of a sudden gets a little bigger because all of a sudden these kids are turned on to this new thing they never knew. Right. right. So they cling on to that, and then all of a sudden that group turns into whatever. And I'm not trying to single out the skinheads or nothing. No. Because the same thing happens when, you know, the grunge kid that only listened to corn came to the punk show and saw the kid with spiky hair and was like, oh, now I'm going to be a punk, and now I know everything about punk. So, you know, okay. he never had a past. He was just punk. But you're staying From true. The you, the I band, mean, is staying true. You're going well, yeah, around. You're touring. We're not trying to, like, be anything. We're not. We're just playing. But n but now you're bringing this form of spoken word. Yes. Which and we had talked a little bit. You're not comfortable with the word activist, but you are you are actually um, empowering people to open their own minds to new ideas and also yes. a whole different avenue to connect to each other. And who knows? I mean, this sounds very far-fetched, but maybe even uh, an act of change. So what you're doing really is is kind of remarkable, especially since you're telling me you're feeling a little bit disenfranchised. Well, for sure. And but it's but here you are yet. By our own people is the problem. And yeah. yet here you are offering well, hope to uh, the hopefully the other people will come back and well, because new I'm people. Not the only one, all these bands that are playing tonight are all treated like shit by the people that say they're like. The people that will step up and be like, hell yeah, I run the scene. You know, I, I ain't comfortable with you saying anything even close, like when we started this. You know, that's not my thing. I'm not a scene -ster. I'm not in it for points. Our band has never been in it for like fame. I, our, the name of the band is New Society of Anarchists. That is not gonna sell Old Navy clothes. You know, so it's like our whole intention is not is clearly not to be like this sellout band that's going to be like a five-year fuck, you know, right. whatever. So then, it, you then know, it's, it's, someone... it's a dedication. My brother's in this band, you know, the the kid we got played, well, he ain't a kid anymore. <laughs> but the, the man that we have playing drums, he's been with us over 15 years. So I think I can say then that you're being true to your roots and true to what you believe <clears throat> in. And you're bringing someone like Dan Lazi in. And I, I can't imagine how many other people that I haven't even heard of. 
So you are really creating an opportunity for someone like me or, or someone who hasn't ever seen this before to have all kinds of, so, I mean, I love the music, the energy, just the... the it's nice to have something else, too. Well, right? sure. You know, and it's like... Sure. I like all kinds of positive. things. positive. He's not like up there, dude, dick, fuck, cunt, you know. Uh, right. But so the bad. other thing but is, too, is that he's... He's not up there being a, a jerk. He's right. up there telling people, like, you know, oh, don't is. be afraid to be yourself. Yeah. And that's, like, so hard so hard to tell people nowadays because no one wants to be themselves right now. That's a very good Everybody point. Everybody wants to blend in and be the next blended in thing, <laughs> you know, whatever. The, the next best blended. Just the next shadow, you yeah. know, next to the next shadow. It's and like, Rick, you find the same, you you find the same kind of resistance? I find a lot of the same in our area. Where, like I said in the last interview that you did recently, when uh, you interviewed Dan, Dan gave a big point with me. <laughs> Everybody has their cross to bear in life, you know. And hardcore should be a place where it does, you know, everybody should be accepted and if someone has a problem you should find out why they have that problem rather than it shouldn't automatically just be a bloodbath. Yes, right. black the the blacklist them um, and tell them, you know, you said this, you did that. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people in my area that if they went through the things that there's a good portion of us that have gone through, mm -hmm. they'd honestly probably just throw in the towel and sure. wave the red flag <laughs> and just you can relate to you that. Know, Definitely hit can hit to that. hit the uh, hit the suicide boat, right. you know. But the rest of us keep cruising on because the whole movement and scene that I've started to build and that has actually been building up does well. We actually have uh, we have you know, five, six bands play. We've got a lot of friends out of state, you know, going from the East Coast to the West Coast, the Midwest, the South. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't matter where it may be. I have people from England and Germany and Belgium and France calling me for shows now. Wow. Telling me they're planning ahead. You know, okay, in a year from now, we're going to need, you know, a gig. And I just honestly think that our scene would do a lot better if more people work together rather than, you know, say, all right, well, this is who I am and I, I want to be somebody. I'm going to sit at the cool kids table. You know, uh, I need to, you know, hang out with this guy in order to be someone. Or, right. And then people get confused. Oh, well, these are my friends. And, you know, no, yeah, let you me, let like me ask you. More. Exactly. <laughs> wearing the same hat. Or let me know, ask too. you about that. Because I did not notice there was a lot of merchandising going on in this show. Now, I'm going to guess, of course, <laughs> that well, you guys was, have your... A lot oh, one broke a lot of stuff down and... Oh, okay, because I I did not. No more victims had tons of. Well, but those are they're they are um, they're not a band. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you uh, know what I'm saying? Number not, uh, but the number bands, I don't. Eyes had a lot of merch. Um, oh, they did. When it comes to a band, yes. Oh dear me, I believe we're having technical difficulties. Well, what happened there? We seem to have lost the interview. I'm going to see if I can get it back. As we were talking to Richard Brophy, uh, who is a promoter out of Massachusetts, and he brought Dan Lawsey here, gave Dan Lawsey his start about 10 years ago. Dan Lawsey used to be a band member himself, and changed to doing more activist type speaking and let's see let me get my levels here correct again okay let's try this again see if we can get the interview back I'll try to get it back to where we started and anytime <laughs> oh, technology is just a wonder thing isn't it all right let's see what happens Promising me results. November 10th, 2012. Okay, he was port of Hamburg, so. You know, so it's like, it, I think it's. 
anything. I'm not trying to, like, be anything or not. I'm just playing. But, n but now you're bringing this form of spoken word. Yes. Which, and we had talked a little bit, you're not comfortable with the word activist, but you're, you are actually um, empowering people to open their own minds to new ideas and also yes. a whole different avenue to connect to each other. And who knows, I mean, this sounds very far-fetched, but maybe even uh, an act of change. So what you're doing really is, is kind of remarkable especially since you're telling me you're feeling a little bit disenfranchised. Well, for sure. I but gave a big point with me. <laughs> Everybody has their cross to bear in life, you know, and hardcore should be a place where it does, you know, everybody should be accepted and if someone has a problem you should find out why they have that problem rather than it should automatically just be a bloodbath yes right. black, the the blacklist kid. them and tell them you know you said this you did that right. i mean there's a lot of people in my area that if they went through the things that there's a good portion of us that have gone through, mm -hmm. they'd honestly probably just throw in the towel, and sure. wave the red flag, and just you can relate to you know, that. Hit, hit, relate to that. hit the uh, hit the suicide boat, right. you know. But the rest of us keep cruising on because the whole movement and scene that I've started to build and that has actually been building up does well. We actually have uh, we have you know five six bands play we've got a lot of friends out of state you know going from the east coast to the west coast the midwest the south mm -hmm. you know doesn't matter where it may be i have people from england germany and belgium and france calling me for shows now wow telling me they're planning ahead you know okay in a year from now we're gonna need you know a gig and i just honestly think that our scene would do a lot better if more people work together rather than, you know, say, all right, well, this is who I am and I, I want to be somebody. I'm going to sit at the cool kids table. You know, uh, I need to, you know, hang out with this guy in order to be someone. Or, and then people get confused. Oh, well, these are my friends. And, you know, let me, just, let me like ask you more. Exactly. <laughs> wearing the same hat. Or let me ask shirt. you about that, because I did not notice there was a lot of merchandising going on in this show. Now, I'm going to guess, of course, that <laughs> well, you guys was, have your a lot oh. of one broke a lot of stuff down. And, Oh, okay, because I I did Ooh, not. Walmart victims have tons of. Well, but those are they're they are um, they're not a band. <laughs> oh, no. you know what I'm saying? Number not. Uh, but the no. bands, I don't. Eyes had a lot of merch. Um, oh, they did. When it comes to a, a band, yes. We got a seven inch okay. that just came out today. Like, okay. And uh, <laughs> Zach's band has a good portion of stuff he has something for everybody okay he's got profanity shirts <laughs> for those you know who are who are older and he has stuff that even kids can wear that's good about yes, that's being good. diverse <laughs> shirts that say rick won't book my band anytime they come through massachusetts I'm the dude who's pulling them. <laughs> okay. It's the same with Pop. And you're taking Pop. them over to Germany with you. Yeah. And, I, and I understand We're there's quite Germany? a culture in Germany that uh, oh. this, this is very popular music in some parts overseas. Punk yes. rock oh, and the whole right. political statement. Exactly. Very much so. That's, very that's much what she so. means. There's, like, there's no, there's no unity in the states. Everyone's spoiled. And, you know. Well, yeah, the commercialism. This, this is not a venue that promotes I, commercialism. I think, um, overseas the culture remains you know it's the idea of underground music being more than just underground music it's un it's a way of life it's a culture of life it's not you're right it's you know it's not just the music and the spoken word and the art and the tattoos and all the stuff that goes with it is all it's all a bigger picture it's all a it's a culture and when you know, so are you saying we're in the Midwest? So like, you know, he they're from out east. In, in my opinion, you know, that's like very much like the root root. Sure, um, our I mean, thirteen colonies. I get uh, it. I, I'm sorry, but uh, I just want to say <laughs> this because uh, yes, because yes. you know, I am just a dumb Midwestern boy, but 
and only seen like stupid hardcore documentaries and I can't stand them but I love to see live music and shit and like I just want to say from a midwesterner to the east coast and this isn't going to be a secret just so you know this ain't going to be a secret <laughs> but like MC5 and uh, Iggy Pop and stuff. Take all the jams, yeah. They're from the Midwest, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Mirage from them. the Midwest, too, homie. And that's but, something we really But my point is, without those bands, there'd be no Ramones. There wouldn't be. Yeah. You're right. There so it's be. from the Midwest. You said it. Yeah. You, yes. You see, <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking. There's places yeah, like no, the tri-state area, you know like saying, no, you have like, Pennsylvania in New Jersey. You've got bands like Bottom Feeder, Lifeless, Anguish, Sicker Than Most, like represent. Uh, d then you got Ohio and Indiana, like ha uh, Hammer Fist, and, not Hammer, um, Silver Hammer. And do you know these bands? Hammer Fist is from California. Some of, these some of them? Okay. Not, you the, not you know, personal level. Right, but you're heard of them. Life After Death. All these bands that are tearing it up in the Midwest, you know, in the Northwest, like the Northwest, the West Coast. And then you have the East Coast, and it's like, okay. We have to depend on New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. I was going to say, the, new, the East Coast is <laughs> a little clicky. Down. Yes, it and is. It always then, has been a little clicky. And, yes, so and then you have, the like, Maryland, everywhere. which so is it's... awesome, which you got Stout. Stout is one of, probably one of the best bands. And like I mentioned before, another band that always, always, always gets shit on. Strength for a reason. One of the heaviest, most loyal, down-home hardcore bands that... It's like if they play up in our area, there's like 40 kids inside watching them and the other like 75, 80 are outside, you know, smoking cigarettes on their phone. There's just a lot of disrespect in New England for hardcore. There really is, unless it's a DIY, like someone books their own thing with their own friends and then bands that are really hungry that want to do it for the right reasons rather than, okay, we're a band. We always want to go in the middle, which is the worst. Any band that says, okay, cool, can we go third? It's like every band wants to go third. You know, okay, well, how about every band on the show set up and you put, you know, <laughs> animatronics on stage right. or dummies and just switch the t-shirts every half hour, okay. you know? That's and terrible, then Rick. Set up. <laughs> Every band in the middle of the floor and have them go third, it's gonna sound terrible. Because you're gonna have like 15 guitars, probably about 14 or 18 basses, depending, you know. But hold, terrible. Now, from a, a promoter's perspective, <laughs> every band wanting to play third, I mean, yeah. No, well, but I mean, from a band's perspective, no kidding, because it's. It's not the way it used to be where the kids came out to the basement and stayed until right. the show was over and, right. fuck, and all had a good time. You're right. Now it's like, you know, these 10 kids watch this band leave. These 10 kids come in, leave. You know, That's interesting. They all like the same kind of yeah. bands, but, but they, they don't, don't like each other. They, oh, wow. It's stupidity. It's, stupidity. it's That's odd, honestly like blatant it's based disrespect. On image and so Dan it's, speaks it's against this. Dan, here's, here's a normal show for me. The New Jacks and the Up and Comers are the first two bands, okay? Or the bands that drive from 45 minutes away, which is honestly, right. you know, right, right down. down the street. And then bring their girlfriends and their girlfriends want to get in you know they, they give the you know guy collecting money or the bonds are on time and then you got like you know oh well i'm the merch guy that comes to the bands okay that's why you went first you know like boom and boom <laughs> and then you get your strongest local to headline and then okay. in between there are all the bands that drove the furthest or the bands that are on tour right. that are getting paid so the first two bands Okay, and the last band. That makes three bands total. Okay. That's what we got. They're all locals. Right. Then you get four bands in between. Right. That's okay. seven a seven band show for ten dollars. Oh my gosh. The bands in between. What a deal. Yeah. 
What the a deal. Exactly. That's a whole day. A whole lot of kids looking at it. Oh, I could, you, I could, you know. Bucks. Wow. Exactly. A lot. So there were supposed to be 10 bands that played. So you agree then with everything Rick is saying, Zach, yeah, that, that this that, is how you do how it? That's how it should. When you're touring, the bands that are traveling need to be able to play. Because it's hard out there. When, you, when you're traveling, you know, for three hours to get to a show and then they're like you're playing last and like all the best bands in town are playing before you you know no it's one's you know no one's watching you they're out of there you can you, you know, get, you get rich shit yeah you get i don't care who you, you are you, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know so, they're loyal to that scene they're not about to be like i mean even if even if that's the situation sometimes you you still don't turn heads you know it's mm -hmm. a it's a fight constantly to try to get people to listen so having, business. you know having somebody like dan and i'm only using dan's name repeatedly because i don't have another example so just throw out another name if you want um but having someone like him then not only uh approaches you know that having the spoken word but eventually maybe he might also then draw people to your show to, to see him well, and then to see you well yeah for sure because and you're okay with that well I would hope so okay I mean the, I idea, just, you know. the idea is for me to bring people for him and if he knows people that don't know me I mean please right. bring them to the show and have them be a part of this because like I said that's the idea of the show is to have lots of them come in here and be a part of something and right. feel like you know this is you know i can belong to something and not have to be a weirdo wow this is so different like a freak or not have to have i know it's just so someone different someone else's views you can have your it own is. opinion because i don't look like this a rocker guy and, and you guys accepted me <laughs> you know rick and dan are polar opposites well you're pretty you know well that's that doesn't story. count you know but i'm wearing a, a cowboy shirt that's you cool. know i'm wearing a fancy cowboy shirt and jeans <laughs> and nobody kicked me out Nobody laughed well, at me. No, no. Nobody I mean, said get out of here. These guys are polar opposites, and they're literally they right. they accept the everybody. Right. You know, hang out with each other daily. So, so this is, like, I mean, this is a, a fascinating venue for people with different ideas yes. to all coexist. Absolutely. The That's energy is about. frantic. Yes. It's Absolutely. it's wonderful. Yes. You guys are just kind of, in a way, visionaries. I'm sure you probably don't think of yourselves as being that, but you really are. You're holding true to a vision that people need. You know, someone's got to keep that light burning in the window, so we all figure out where to get back to. Yes. So yes. this, I mean, so this is so great. I'm so glad that we could get you to talk to us, Zach. Do you have a website or something that people could, we can link to for you? I think it's uh, Facebook. Uh, so they can, Society of Anarchists. So they can friend you. Out. Yes. Okay, absolutely. on Facebook. Yeah. And Rick, we we know we can. Well, I don't know. If we know where we can get a hold of you. How do we get you a hold? Get a hold of, of me on the my name. number. How do we find uh, your, your programs? Um, <laughs> under my name, if you add me on Facebook, it's uh -huh. Dick Richards. Okay. Like that's my name. You you should see some right, profane picture that. or whatever. Okay. You know, <laughs> it's and funny. <laughs> Obviously, I do that. I I've had booking companies, Warlord Booking, um, Funhouse Syndicate, Shop Shooter Shows, but I like to mix it up to make you know for people to keep thinking like, all right, you know, people who normally wouldn't come out go, okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. Yeah. Let's see who it is. I'm just curiosity like, oh, wow, now. No. I want to come see the shows too because I'm no, just I so curious so. now about what I'm missing. I've yeah, obviously been missing quite better. a bit. Well, the more you come, you get familiar with the songs and the bands and the people, and then exactly the next thing you know, you're a part of it, and you didn't even have to change your. I didn't even have to put my you, cowboy you shirt back in the closet. No, nope, you <laughs> came as you were, and you you found that it didn't matter wow you know this has just been great i'm so glad you could <laughs> give so. us a couple minutes rick i know you're waiting here to get back on the road so rick from massachusetts you're welcome here anytime and zach yeah, yes. keep it going locally uh, you know get a hold of us we'll promote you and uh and wow Thank you. Thank you both. Anytime. So anytime. much. You so much. Some music, anytime. I can give you some music. Uh, maybe we can even uh, dot the interview with some music if you'd like sure, to leave yeah, me some I'll music. Give be nice. Oh, okay. They got some good material. All right. Excellent. Okay, guys. Absolutely. I got to sign off now. All right. But Thank thanks you, for yes. being here. Thank, Thank you so much. This is Caitlin Rudding 
Once again, my thanks to Richard Brophy and Zach C. of New Society for Anarchy. Thank you, Zach, for your efforts. Hardcore for Hunger 5, this is the fifth year. This is an annual event in November. Thanks again for sitting down and talking to me. I hope everyone got a new understanding of activism on a local scale and the hardcore scene. Thanks again for listening. Holy shit, man. No, I'm not, because everyone keeps telling me to cut it, so I'm going. Feel like you're not here for Please, yeah, man, you gotta get a hit. This song goes out to Justin Bieber. Because he's fucking talented, man. <laughs> So it's called Idiot Breed. Zach C. and Richard Brophy. It was an interview that I conducted on November 10th when they were in town. And if we're fortunate, we're expecting a call in from Kelly from No More Victims 2. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to have a live interview with her. Just briefly, touching base, see what they're up to, see how we can connect with them. I want to let you know that we'll be doing an in-depth interview with Kelly, a prepared interview, this next week. December 14th, I believe, is our next show date. I will also have, hopefully, that, I should say, footage, that uh, audio of Dan Lozzi's show, his 12, 13 minutes of spoken word as well, on stage at O'Keefe's Port of Hamburg on South Howell there. I'm sure we've given them plenty of credit. So hopefully we're going to hear from Kelly from New Mo No More Victims, too. They have been... Oh, roughly in existence, almost 18 months now. They spent uh, about a year on the road with Don Lazi, kind of training in the trenches there to get a get an idea of what was going on. Ah, there she is now. Hello, Kelly. Can Hi. There we go. Oh, you sound just fine. Oh, that's great. I was so worried. <laughs> no, no, no. We're on the air live. It's wonderful to hear from you. And you oh, sound you, you just too. great. Just great today. So I was just explaining to everybody, we were just finishing listening to the interview with Zach Z from New Society of Anarchists and Richard Brophy and talking about how spoken word has kind of evolved in the hard rock scene and how that has kind of emerged as a new style alternative activism reaching out to other people of like minds at these shows and i was just uh, going to give a little background information and then you called so i think maybe maybe you should give us your background information if you would okay well my name is kelly um i am the founder of a group called no more victims Two. Um, Dan from the Outlook dot uh, org. He kind of got us started in all of this, um, and uh, it, it, the way that he delivers his spoken word was so inspiring to us that I just knew that was the way we were going to do this. And my cousin Logic, he's just—he's a natural entertainer. He's incredible with words, and it was just like you know, it all fell together. This is spoken word is what we need to do. This is how we're going to get our word out there, and it's just—it's been incredible the response from it. And how long have you guys been been at this now? How long have you been available to, for people to contact you who need help? Um, I'd say about a year and a half. Uh, yeah, we met Dan um, not this April, past April, but the April before that, and then April and May, or yeah, April and May of this year, uh, we actually were able to go on a bit of a tour with him um, through some of the southern states to learn, you know, to get to watch him and to learn more about what he does and, you know, how we want to plan what we're going to do with our future. And uh, it's just, it's evolved so quickly. You know, the spoken word has become pretty powerful. It, it's amazing listening to it. And I've had the pleasure of hearing some of, of Logic's work, and that's something we're going to be featuring in the interview. I was just letting the audience know that we're going to be doing an in-depth inter interview with you, a pre 
recorded interview you and I did about a week ago uh, that ha yep. is going to be uh, featuring some of Logic's uh, performances, actually. Yeah, he's, he's definitely... He definitely has a gift with words, and that's just putting it mildly. Let's, I've had the benefit of hearing this, and of course you have the benefit of having Logic as a cousin, so we're kind of at an advantage over the audience who probably hasn't really heard or, or doesn't really know what it is that we're talking about. When you and I were talking, we were, we were actually uh, naming Logic's pieces as poems. Mm -hmm. So there, are, I, I, the thing that I would describe them as is almost like what you might expect with rap, but without the music and with a little bit more attention paid to maybe the delivery of it. I, yeah, I definitely. Um, I know that's how Logic came about to it. He's been a performer in the Champaign, Illinois area for many, many years. His name is really well known. Um, he has several albums available. He was a rapper, still is. Um, and, you know, he's just forever, he's had that gift with words. <laughs> So he, has he actually been a singer slash rapper then prior to doing the spoken word? Yes, for many years. For many years. Was, is he still known under the same name? Was his name as a, as a musical performer also Logic? Yes. Okay, so people could find him then if they wanted to hear some of his rap music then. Oh, definitely. He's on Facebook as Logic Mr. Killinoise. <laughs> <laughs> That's his. Uh, that's his Facebook page. Is is so. that a play on uh, Illinois? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's uh, also on there as Logic for No More Victims. Okay. So you can look him up either way. All right. Now, see, again, I've had the advantage of hearing some of this work. I caught uh, some of his performance actually at the Port of Hamburg show here in Milwaukee on November tenth. And I'm very much looking forward to being able to play his work this coming Friday. I sh shouldn't be getting a whole of ahead of myself here. We're still dealing with this Friday. <laughs> Can, let's get one show at a time here. So, but right now you guys are located out of Springfield, Illinois. Correct. And Kelly, I, I, I got to hear your offer. I'd like you to tell the people listening what, what your basic offer is if, if someone needs help. Um, well, basically, uh, my part, my work in this organization is I'm the resource person, kind of like the go-to. And um, what I do is, you know, if, if you're in a situation where, you know, you're being abused, you're, you're, you have a elderly loved one that you know is being abused, you know animals who are being abused, you yourself need out of a situation. I don't care where you are in this country, call me. I will get on the computer and I will find you whatever resources you need wherever you are to help you get to where you need to be. And my phone, it's, I put out my personal cell phone number. You can call me day or night. If you get my voicemail, I promise I will call you back as soon as I can. Um, I just want people to know that I'm available. I will, I will research till my fingers bleed to get them the help that they need. That's an incredible offer. Uh, you don't hear too many people offering that kind of help, even when you're in a local organization in a local circumstance. I, I think it's important for people to realize that there is someone, there is Kelly now, who's there to help yeah. you. If you can't find what you need or you're just overwhelmed. Uh, I think a lot of times when we're looking at, for help that we need and we're in a crisis, we become very easily overwhelmed and can't see the the lawn for the blades of grass. So Exactly. And you know, the sad part of that is a lot of people end up going to their doctors and then their doctors start shoving pills down their throat and it gets worse and worse and worse. You know, and it's, if it's something that we can nip in the bud early, then that's what we need to do. Wow, such such a unique organization, and I know you do a lot of work locally. We talked about that, but you've you've also been contacted by people from other states and overseas. Is that correct? 
Um, not overseas yet. I mean, we do know people over there, um, and maybe in the future, you know, we get to be as big and as lucky as Dan has been with his organization. And, uh, you know, hopefully someday, you know, as far as we can get our word out there, the, you know, it would just be wonderful. And basically your message is you don't have to be a victim anymore. You can now be a survivor. It's just amazing. Um, do you, and you also uh, work with other organizations as well. I know that you guys make appearances to support uh, like food drives or marathons. You're, you're also active in those ways? Oh, yes. Um, like Zach and Anna, we went up there for the Hardcore for Hunger. Um, here in Springfield, we've done Walk a Mile in Her Shoes to raise money for um, a local uh, counseling center for the sexually assaulted. Um, we also did the Polar Plunge last year and raised uh, almost $600 for the Special Olympics. Wow. So we're we're getting out there at every opportunity we have just to let people know that we're there to help. Wow, that's really wonderful. I know that when we were talking, you do a lot locally, just in your own hometown there. And you have a website. I don't know if we've given people that website. Would you tell us that site? Sure. It is um, www.nomorevictims2.com, and that two is the number two, not uh, spelled out. So it's nomorevictims2.com. Okay. And you actually told me a, a really kind of a very charming story about how it ended up being No More Victims 2. I thought maybe you might like to share that. Um, I tell you, it's, uh, it's all the end. Um, Dan Lazi from The Outlook, he's, he's been my angel through all of this. Um, we met him at that show less than a year later. We were on tour with him, and uh, I just know that we wouldn't be where we are right now if it weren't for him and his help. And uh, I want to send a shout-out to him and say thanks because... You know we're we're really gr we're growing and we're actually we're doing more and more and more good and that feeling is so incredible to I don't know, just to brighten somebody's day. Yeah, it's it is just amazing that you're there for someone that a person does not have to go through some of these experiences alone that are overwhelming and are frightening. You have that website. Uh, are there any activities that are going to be coming up that put you anywhere near our area, or um, in not in your area? Um, I know that on the 21st <laughs> we've been invited to speak at an end of the world party oh my yeah so we'll be out there and um it'll be with uh one of our local bands we we do a lot of work with them they're called ghost hollow road um and it's going to be at the tin can pub downtown springfield on the 21st um it's just going to be a good time and <laughs> we're, we've been given the opportunity to you know, send out our message, and you know, if the world does end, then the people that are still there need a good lesson. And I'm glad to be able to be there to, you know, help out. Uh, what kind of music is this going to be? Um, this particular show is mostly old style country, um, uh, kind of. I, I don't know. It's just. Uh, it's hard for me to explain. My my husband's more the music guy. Ah, okay. I, know, I know Ghost Ghost Hollow Road. We hang out with them a lot, and he does his own style of country music, and they're just they're really great to us. Oh, I just love that name. It just it has such an evocative uh, sense to it. You know, Ghost Ghost Holler Ghost Hollow Road. Yes, Hollow Hollow. <laughs> interesting. That is just <laughs> that's yeah. pretty wild. So that's the 21st. So I take it that means that there are some people out there who think the world's going to end, but not prior to you guys having this nice big send off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds just great. I love it. Is Logic performing um, separately now, or is he performing strictly with no more uh, victims? Um, he's, he does both. Um, he was just called to MC a show in Champaign a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he went and did that, you know, and, uh, but he's, he works mostly with no more victims. That's his number one priority. Right now. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, I'm not quite sure what else I should cover here. Is, uh, what have I not covered that maybe we should know about? Um, my phone number. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, because if you are, in fact, there for anybody at any time, uh, we do need to have that phone number to get a hold of you. Okay, it is uh, area code 217-720-2821. And like I said, if you get my voicemail, just leave me a message briefly telling me what you need. I'll see what I can find, and uh, then I will call you back, and we'll dig deeper into it. Well, I, I would imagine that you must be very busy. Um, currently, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't help any that our car just broke down the other day. So, you know, it makes it that much harder to get done what we need to do. Huh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I that just, was weird. I know, I just heard some music and I have no clue what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, thought it was one of those go to commercial cues. I was trying um, to hurry up and talk. It sure sounded like one, but unfortunately I don't have any ability to generate those right now. Uh, I, however, <laughs> it's a very active place I am at this moment and many things are going on here. So apparently, I can't, you know, occasionally people do hear background noise and I, I gotta say we have a, a very small small studio here which is actually the window storefront of a video store it's a pretty interesting little setup so we're oh, actually okay. on display in the window here as we're doing shows <laughs> and people come by and make what faces at us and they point but they also come in so we you're hearing the actual ambient noise is the audience uh, coming and buying videos and talking and having conversations while they point at me or whoever's here and <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just kind of interesting things. And we do stream live, actually, on Ustream. And we do have a camera. And if anybody were watching right now, uh, let me see what the picture is. You'd be seeing uh, someone peeking in the window at me right now and my shadow and basically the street. There's a car parked next to the bench that's right out in front of the windows. And it's a busy evening. Of course, it's about 10 after 5 now here locally. So, well, Kelly, I appreciate you talking to us. Again, we're looking forward to that interview that's coming up. And uh, we're going to just put a, put a shout out there. If anybody can help with the car situation for Kelly and her crew there, that would be great. She gave you the number. Kelly, give us the number again. It's uh, area code 217-720-2821. One. I'm a strong believer in putting your, your requests and your needs out there. You never know who might come come to your aid, as it were. So, well, Kelly, I appreciate you talking to us. I know you've been a little bit under the weather. A lot of us are, are just dealing with these colds that are lingering on and on and on. I know, the weather is just so crazy. 71 day, 30 the next. Yeah, I know, and, and now they're actually talking that it might finally start to get back to normal normal temperatures again. I don't know if we even know what normal is anymore. It's been, <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's been so long. So, well, I'll be talking to you myself, I know, soon. Um, but again, we'll be looking forward to those performances uh, on the radio next week that will be pre-recorded, and we'll be getting uh, a more of an in-depth interview with you and also with Ross, your husband, also co-founder and active member of No More Victims, and and we're also hoping at some point in time maybe to get some live feedback from Sean. That would be great, a.k.a. Logic. Excuse me, folks. <laughs> I'm so used to calling him Sean, a.k.a. Logic, that it's hard not to just yeah. to say Logic. We're just not used to it. So, well, Kelly, I'm going to wish you a good evening from River West Radio here. And we really very much appreciate your time and bringing your services and your wonderful energy to the community and to us as a whole. And we well, will be talking to you soon, please. Great. Thank you so much for giving this, us this opportunity. And thank you to you for what you do, for bringing all of those who are ready to help together. And uh, it's going to do a lot of good for the people who need to help. So thank you to you also. Well, that's very sweet of you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it takes all of us. It, as they say, it takes a village, not just to raise a child, but to have a community. So I'm hoping that part of the function of our Breaking Down the News program here will not only be educating 
educating people in what's going on internationally, globally, and uh, but locally, and also to give them places to exercise their activism, places to donate, places to get involved, things to do, and places to get help themselves when they're feeling overwhelmed and abused, as we all feel on occasion. Amen to that. Kelly, you have a great evening again. Thanks. You too. And I will be talking to you soon. Great. Thank you again. Absolutely. Bye now. <laughs> Bye-bye. That was Kelly from No More Victims 2. Spring, they're currently located in Springfield, Illinois. One of the things that we did not get a chance to talk about that we'll ta we will address at another point, actually during that interview that I hope to play for you next weekend, is that they've actually been contacted already by a man in a southern state who had heard of them. I don't know if he'd actually traveled to one of the performances that they were involved in uh, when they were on tour with Dan Lazi, but someone did approach them and did ask if maybe he could start a chapter in his own community sometime in the future. They're not quite ready to organize that at this point, but when they do, boy, won't that be just wonderful. So again, this is an organization whose purpose is to help you get out of a bad situation if you're in one, to help you move forward if you're stuck, and basically let you know that you're not alone, that someone is there to help you, and someone is there to validate your experience and, and support you. Kelly is listed as Kelly Angel in my contacts list. I made reference last week when Michael and I were talking that I call her Kelly the Angel, and she let me know that she felt that was maybe uh, a step beyond humility and I explained to her that I felt that angels were people that helped other people without regard to themselves and she certainly fits that bill with all of the trials and tribulations that she's going through right now personally and with family and relatives. She still is tireless in her efforts to reach out and to help and to be there and to be that rock and to be that ray of sunshine just to light up a situation and let you see things from a different view. So we thank Kelly. We thank Kelly and her husband, Ross, and cousin Sean, AKA Logic, and I, I just am thrilled to be able to have permission from him to bring you some of his uh, spoken word. And we will do that for you next weekend on Friday the 14th. Friday, December 21st, I actually ha hope to have some helpful and happy information for you that the world is not coming to the end, as some people believe, but actually we have a bright future and what you can do to embrace and enjoy the coming seven years of what I know to be called the seven years of integrity. And I'm hoping maybe even to have some surprise interviews. They won't be particularly lengthy interviews, but I'm hoping to actually get input from different areas of science and philosophy to help us kind of make sense of how things, how people lost track in believing that this would be actually the end of the world. Just to change tracks a little bit here, before I get into national and international news, I wanted to read this article from the Star Tribune. This is uh, an article that basically talks about what happened when a community had the sand mining people come in and, and what it did to them. So I'm going to read this briefly and then I'm going to explain a little bit more to you why I would read this, why I would bring this up and why this is news for you to know about. Tevlin, Roaring Trucks, Frack Sand Dust Disrupt a River Town's Rhythm. This article was submitted by John Tevlin, the Star Tribune, September 22, 2012. McGregor, Iowa. McGregor is a cozy, cozy town wedged between soaring bluffs and the lazy curve of the Mississippi River in northeastern Iowa. The main drag is lined by tidy 19th century brick buildings. Two lovely nature preserves, Pike Peak State Park, and the Yellow River State Forest sit nearby. On a sunny September morning, the streets were spotless and quiet, for now. 
It wasn't this way for much of the summer. Until about a month ago, hundreds of trucks from a nearby frack sand mine roared through downtown instead of going around the village that relies on tourism for survival. The trucks spewed clouds of sand and dust and shook the historic building so hard that the walls of some cracked. In June, a couple visiting from California for their 50th anniversary wrote a letter complimenting residents for their hospitality, but added, however, much to our dismay, we were greeted with huge trucks roaring through town 24 hours a day. The simple act of crossing the street became a safety hazard, and a normal night's sleep was impossible. We cannot emphasize enough the effect this has had on our considering McGregor for future stays. The local sand pit had been around for decades and was no problem, until the sand became valuable for hydrofracking, a fairly new process used to extract oil or natural gas from the ground. At first, local officials were thrilled with the mine's expansion, as it would meet as many as 150 new jobs. They didn't realize, however, that the main street was a state highway and the city had no control over it. So instead of going around the town, the trucks barreled through downtown on their way to Wisconsin. Besides the noise and traffic, the town had a perpetual layer of sand dust, many residents said. McGregor Mayor Gay Halberg asked the owner of Pattison Sand, why are you doing this to us? According to Halberg, he replied, because I can. Pattison did not return a phone call asking for comment. In several Minnesota counties, the industry is set to explode. Critics of frack mining have already visited McGregor to see for themselves the potentially disastrous unintended consequences of the industry. The trucks from Pattison, I'm sorry, from Pattison stopped suddenly a month ago. City officials are not sure why, but think it may be because of temporary gluttons of sand in the market. The truck drivers were laid off, an early indication of the boom-bust nature of mining, but rumors are they began rehiring them last week. It started up overnight, said Lynette Sander, the, the city administrator. For all I know, it could start again tomorrow night. That would not please Linda Bok Bokey, uh, who owns a vintage clothing shop inside two historic buildings on Main Street. As she walked around the building showing cracks in the foundation, she talked about what life was like when the trucks are rolling. We put in air conditioners because we can't open our windows because of the dust and the noise, she said. We sleep in the back. We can still hear the trucks and feel the building shaking at night. I'm concerned about the infrastructure that will have to replace the streets and the sewers and will be stuck with the bill. Her husband, Jim, had an, a nuanced view of the situation. It's not black or white, he said. This country is in, econ in economic decline and we need the fuel. That guy does create jobs and we need those. The Bokes or Bokies used to rent rooms to mine employees, so they have seen some benefits to the mine. It is a two-edged sword, he said. It is a sentiment echoed around town. Truthfully, I like the jobs for the guys, says Halberg. I like them coming into the store where I work, but I want those trucks out of town. Halberg even petitioned the Iowa Department of Transportation for help. They said their business was to move traffic, not stop it. Halberg said some residents have complained of respiratory problems since the sand trucks began. The town is a narrow valley and sand gets trapped in the air here. It looks almost like smoke, Halberg said. Halberg and Sander said the issue has divided the community. People outspoken about the problems have had their jobs threatened, and because land is being bought up secretly, there is a la lack of trust between neighbors. Asked what advice she would give Minnesotans as they consider sand mines in their neighborhood, Halberg said, research, ask a lot of questions, and talk to the experts. Be prepared, said Sander. Don't just look at the jobs, look at the impact on the town and the county. The pros are great, but there are a lot of cons we didn't know about. Tourism and sand? I don't think it's a good mix, she said. Again, that's from the Star Tribune. McGregor, Iowa, uh, if Pikes Peak State Park is in their backyard, that would be between the two bridges that cross the Mississippi. One of them is in the Prairie du Chien and the other one 
is a good 30 miles north, I'm sorry, 30 miles south to cross. And McGregor is probably right in between across from approximately the confluence of the Wisconsin and the Mississippi. It's probably up just a little bit and uh, is across from Wild Loosing State Park. Now, if you're not familiar with Wild Loosing State Park, it is, again, where the confluence of the Mississippi and the, the Wisconsin are. It is his historically an incredibly packed place. Indian history, culture, it, it actually even is home to the, uh, believe this, the Passenger Pigeon Monument. Yes, sir, on the banks of the Mississippi, actually looking over the confluence from one of the highest points in the park is the Passenger Pigeon Monument. This is all also part of the Epigee Mounds that line the Mississippi and areas. Epigee Mound National Park is just to the north and includes some area across from Wild Loosing in Iowa along the canoe trails there. There actually is an island that is all covered with epigees you can only get to by water. I had the great fortune of visiting that for the very first time beginning of November this year. There are a lot of changes intended for some of Wisconsin state parks, some of the land usage, and these are issues that you should know about. They're talking about possibly inter introducing uh, increased hunting in the area, which would pe put people who are walking, hiking, who are there for birding, there to canoe, it, it would put some of these people at risk during certain parts of the year. Because remember now, Wisconsin has so much game, and I, I think that we don't even realize how many different hunting seasons, how many different critters that we actually do uh, give permits to hunt here. Everything from morning doves, to uh, to bear, uh, just I mean the the list is unbelievable. Jays, feral cats, turkeys, grouse, pheasant. There, are, there's just a hunting season for everything, and then there are, are hunting seasons for everybody. There are take your teenager hunting. That's a two week season prior to the official deer rifle hunt or deer gun hunt. Bull season starts early in September. Turkey permits are only issued during several weeks out of the year at certain times of the year. Uh, again, the, the list is incredible. And so far, we've been able to coexist, and it looks like we're not going to be able to coexist much longer. There is a group in Wisconsin whose name, unfortunately, is eluding their email address. Otherwise, I could give it to you. <laughs> But in there, I think there was Wisconsin water or something of that sort. When I get it, I will post it so that you guys can check it for yourself. But I got this article was forwarded to me. Again, I'm going through things that have been forwarded to me right now. Uh, focusing, uh, they, they are a watchdog group of concerned citizen volunteers who, who keep track of what's going on and publish a newsletter that's an email service to let you know who's doing what in terms of helping or harming and what's being done and what's being taken away from us, what we st tend to stand to lose. This article, which they encourage people to share, is called Giant Leap Backwards for Wisconsin's Waters. On Tuesday, May 24th, Republican members of the legislature's Joint Finance Committee, which is now known as JFC, voted to overturn Wisconsin's rules for controlling polluted runoff and set the stage for routing recent approval rules to control algae-causing phosphorus and to protect lakes and rivers by managing shoreland development. Polluted runoff, fertilizer and manure from farm fields, and oil, metals, and other toxic stuff from city streets is the biggest source of pollution to Wisconsin waterways. Without any discussion, JFC voted to direct the Department of Natural Resources to repeal and recreate NR 151, the state's rules for controlling non-point pollution. In place since 2002, after years of painstaking negotiations and compromise, and lauded as a model program across the country, the non-point rules were amended just last year to improve how they would work for private landowners and municipalities. 
Even though last year's update took years of work by citizen advisory committees and the DNR staff, the direction from joint finance is to redo it by the end of this year. Pardon us for failing to believe that the new version will provide the protections our waters deserve. JFC also directed the DNR to complete, by the end of the year, an economic impact analysis of two rules adopted just last year, standards to control how much phosphorus can enter waterways and standards for development along shorelines to protect lakes and rivers from the impacts of development. Clearly, this is the first step to gutting the phosphorus rule and the shoreland zoning rule too as analysis, analyses would be used to argue that protecting Wisconsin's lakes and streams is bad for business. The dismantling of these three important rules would be a giant step backward in the protection and restoration of Wisconsin's waters, but there's still a chance to fix this bad situation. These issues are inappropriately buried in the state budget which is still under review by the Joint Finance Committee. They could choose to revise their vote, but they need to hear from you why gutting these rules is a bad idea. Please let them know today. Contact your legislators. You can find contact information for your senator and representative and register comments with a quick email or just a phone call. Contact the Joint Finance Committee it is especially important to contact your legislator if they are a member of this committee, but the entire committee should hear from you. And in a continued article here, they also wanted to, they also made a cry out about uh, a bridge that was going to be uh, expansive bi bridge. They were with slating to build over the troubled scenic waters of the, 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 the St. Croix, excuse me, St. Croix River. And this is being fast tracked. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll read this to you. A, a controversial bill over federal wild and scenic St. Croix River at Stillwater, Minnesota, got a boost this week from Wisconsin legislators who, while being thrifty with so many other things, seem willing to spend twice as much money as necessary to build this bridge. The bridge's controversial nature was underscored recently when the American Rivers put the Lower St. Croix on its 2011 list of the plan is to put a massive four-lane bridge in an area that doesn't need that capacity and will mar the beauty of the Lower St. Croix. Both states will pitch in to build it at an estimated cost of $700 million. Critics, including the River Alliance, argue a, mo more, a most adequate two-lane bridge could be built for half the cost and there's a six-lane interstate bridge seven miles south of this site. Senator Sheila Harsdorf, who represents that part of Wisconsin, some of whose constituents drool at the prospect of the land they can develop, introduced the legislature this week, I'm sorry, the legislation this week to remove the requirement that a federal subsidy be provided before the bridge is built. This bill will likely pass, and most legislators, I'm sorry, <laughs> legislators at the hearing this week had clearly drunk the gotta have four laner Kool Aid, a four lane bridge at the expense of taxpayers and a wild and scenic river. And it looks to me like this information came to me forwarded from the River Alliance, and I would imagine that is probably riveralliance.com because I don't see anything here that says .org. Okay, so why these articles? That's a fair question because McGregor, Iowa is across the street from Wild Lucing State Park and that Bridgeport is the tiny little community between the land the state park is on the Wisconsin River and Prairie du Chien, and that is currently where they are trying to put a sand mine in. And the way they're getting around the rules, 
because the rules are you can't do anything that would disrupt the river or create disharmony along the shoreline. Um, they, f they are trying to get around this rule by having the mine be on property that's privately owned. The man who was presenting this property, I believe, is the mayor or the head of the council involved, the town council involved, to pass this. He is a good buddy of our not-so-good buddy, Governor Scott Walker, and they are doing everything they conceivably can to try to push this plan through, even going as far as refusing access to the meeting by local inhabitants. Yes, folks, local residents were not given the opportunity, or they tried to not give them the opportunity to speak at their own hearing in regards to this, in order to try to fast track this through and basically let private business start taking over the resources and rewrite the language in the bill that present pr that protects the Wisconsin River and its shoreline. This is an atrocity on a scale to which I don't even know how to explain. But Wisconsin has unbelievable natural resources and I don't mean we have coal deposits or oil deposits I mean that we have geological formations here we have rivers we have waterways here we have land masses here we have wetlands we have marshes we have unbelievable diversity seen in almost no other state in the continental United States we have 10,000 unnamed lakes versus Minnesota's t land of 10,000. We are the land of 10,000 unnamed as of yet lakes. So put that in your hat. So I will bring you some more information on what frack welling is and how disgusting and awful it is. It is a cancer causing way of forcing, breaking up ground with high pressure in sand and forcing gas and other natural elements, fuel elements, to be separated more easily and more quickly from the land in which they're either entrapped or buried in. So it's an awful thing. It sounds as sickening as it is. It causes illness, it causes disease, and it destroys land, waterways, habitat for fish, fowl, and mammals alike. So. Let's get on with my box here of awaiting emails. Uh, someone else sent in a, an article. Again, now we're getting back to Mercola. We're gonna take a little side track here into health issues and we're going to go over this antibiotic alert. I'm sure this is information that we've all heard. And antibiotics can be bad for you. The overuse of antibiotics can cause super resistant strains of bacteria. Again, for those of you who are never quite sure, like which, which cable do you attach the battery to first when you're jumping another dead battery? We know that uh, antibiotics are used for the treatment of bacterial infections, not for viral infections. That would be an antiviral drug. These are antibiotics. This is entitled Antibiotic Alert. The drug the doctor ordered could cause deadly side effects. Again, this was written by Dr. Mercola, October 20th, 2012. His site is mercola.com, and again, the header is Take Control of Your Health. Wow, this is a word I don't even know if I can say. <laughs> Fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones are among the most commonly prescribed class of antibiotics in the United States. Among the most well-known is Cipro, made by Bayer, which became a household name during the anthrax scare that occurred shortly after 9-11. Levaquin is a close second. All antibiotics carry a risk of side effects, but the fluoroquinolones are a class by themselves when it comes to their potential cause serious permanent injuries and even death. Given their potential to harm, they should be reserved for treating only the most serious bacteria infections that won't respond to any other treatment. Instead, they are often offered for mild conditions like sinus, urinary tract, and ear infections. Fluoroquinolones, the deadliest antibiotics on the market, 
If your doctor hands you a prescription for a fluoroquinolone antibiotic, this could not only be Cipro, but Leviquin, but also a uh, Avlox or generic Ciprofloxacin, Levofloxacin, or Monofloxacin, and others. Be very certain that your condition warrants the risks that come along with taking these drugs. Fluoroquinolones have fluoride as the central part of the drug. Fluoride is known neurotoxin, and the drugs with attached fluoride can penetrate into very sensitive tissues. The fluoroquinolones have been, the, or I'm sorry, have the unique ability to penetrate your blood-brain barrier, entering your brain and damaging your central nervous system. Many of these drugs have already been removed from the market due to their toxicity and those that remain are riddled with black box warnings required by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. In 2008, the FDA required seven fluoroquinolone antibiotics to add a black box warning because they pose a risk of tendinitis and increase the risk of tendon rupture by three to four times. And folks, I can attest to that one. I was on one of these drugs a couple years ago and believe me, uh, it warned that it would reactivate a tendon injury, and it did, and it was, it's an extremely painful experience. This is by far the, the only risk. This is, but, but this is far from the only risk. There we go. Leviquin, again, that's the one that I tried, for instance, which was the best-selling antibiotic in 2010. Mm, that's a coincidence. That's when it was prescribed for me. Faces thousands of lawsuits a year from people who have been seriously harmed after taking it. Yes, I must say I was not very thoroughly warned as to the side effects and more than just the normal, if this happens, call your doctor. The reactions can be body-wide, impacting your central nervous system, musculoskeletal system, visual and renal systems, and sometimes simultaneously. Among the serious reactions reported are nerve, um, acute f kidney failure, psychotic reactions, hearing problems, brain fog, painful rashes, disruptions to blood sugar metabolism, peripheral neuropathy, Phototoxicity, depression, my goodness, that loss is more than I can read. Let's see here. Renal detachment, which can cause blindness. Holy cats, folks. Hallucinations, nausea, and diarrhea. In 2001, a study conducted by Dr. J. Cohen, the following reaction rates were documented. Nervous system symptoms occurred in 91% of patients pain, tingling and numbness, dizziness, malaise, weakness, headaches, anxiety and panic, loss of memory and psychosis. Musculoskeletal symptoms in 73% of patients, tinnitus, altered vision, olfactory and auditory function. Cardiovascular symptoms in 36% of patients, tachycardia, shortness of breath, chest pain and pal palpitations. Skin reactions concern, uh, in 29% of patients, rashes, hair loss, sweating, intolerance to heat and cold, gastrointestinal symptoms in 18% of patients, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. In a letter to his congressman, he wrote, the severe reactions are occurring in patients who are usually healthy, active, and young. Most often, the antibiotics are prescribed for mild infections such as cyanitis, urinary, or prostate infections. Most reactions occur very quickly, sometimes with just a few doses of the fluoroquinolone antibiotic. Reactions are acute, severe, frightening, and often disabling. Since the publication of my article with its 45 cases two and a half years ago, I have received emails from more than 100 people seeking help for their reactions. In most cases, their doctors have dismissed their complaints or outright denied that these re reactions could occur with fluoroquinolones. Yet extensive medical workups do not find any other cause. Worse, there are no known effective treatments. Thus, these people who suffer pain and disability for weeks, months, and years. Increased antibiotic resistance infection rates also linked to fluoroquinolones. 
or quinolones, quinolones. Overuse of these potent antibiotics have been linked to antibiotic resistant infections like methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MR, SA, or what we call MRSA, vancomycin van resistant Enterocoli, or VRE, and the potentially life threatening diarrhea caused by Clostridium difficile D diff or C. diff is the short abbreviation for it. According to some research being given, fluoroquinolones um, is the most important risk factor in developing Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea, CDAD. Again, a large part of the problem is that these drugs, which are meant to be reserved for life-threatening infections that are cannot otherwise be treated, are being vastly overused. In a study in BMC infectious diseases, it was found that nearly 40% of fluoroquinolone treatments at one medical center were unnecessary, while other research found 81% of the fluoroquinolone prescriptions in two academic emergency departments were inappropriately based on institutional guidelines, as reported by the New York Times, quote, an interview Mayer Etiminan, a pharmacologist ep epidemiologist at the University of British Columbia said the drugs were overused by lazy and quote by lazy doctors who are trying to kill a fly with an automatic weapon end quote the drugs are thought to be particularly dangerous for children under 18 adults over 60 and pregnant and nursing women oh my goodness I can't imagine even giving those drugs to a pregnant or nursing woman as well as people with liver disease or those taking corticosteroids or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, but they are often prescribed for those groups anyway. Oh my goodness. Writing in Forbes contributor Melanie Hyken recalled taking her teenage daughter to the doctor while being handed a prescription for Cipro for her even though she was under 18 and seeking treatment for an ear infection. This prompted Hyken to dig deeper before giving her daughter the drug, but many others are completely unaware that the antibiotic they've just been prescribed has been linked to such deadly side effects. They assume it's like any other antibiotic. Avoid Cipro and other fluoride antibiotics or run the risk of serious side effects. If your doctor prescribes you one of these dangerous antibiotics, ask him or her to use another one. It is uncommon that it would be the only one that could be used. These dangerous antibiotics should be used at the last resort only. If you do wind up using them, then read the package insert and all the warnings very carefully and stop them the moment you notice a side effect. In today's expansive age of online networking, the, there exists a large community of people who've experienced floral quinolone injuries. They often to re refer to themselves as floxies as their numbers continue to grow as the prescriptions flow. Quite a few of these floxies are in the medical field themselves or were before they were poisoned and are on a mission to help fellow floral quinolone victims. You too can help get the word out by sharing this information with your friends and family and advising them to consider alternatives before taking these drugs, especially if they're prescribed for a minor condition. You wouldn't knowingly risk permanent blindness, personality changes, or psychotic reactions to treat your ear infection, especially if there were a safer alternative. And there n nearly always is. David A. Flockhart, professor of medicine and chief of clinical pharmacology at Indiana University School of Medicine, reports as many as one third of patients taking a floral quinolone experience will experience some sort of negative psychiatric effect, such as anxiety, personality changes, or confusion. He has treated more than 100 patients with such psychiatric side effects, stating, and I quote, the psychiatric effects of floral quinolones are underappreciated by the medical profession as well as by the public. The bigger the gun you use, the dormant, the more damage you can spect as collateral, end quote. Cipro, Leviquin, and the related drugs in the class 
are very big guns that should only be used in very special circumstances. Please be absolutely sure that yours is one of them before consenting to the use of these drugs. Well, there's some nightmare news for you and a personal uh, experience that these things are awful, just awful, and I am systematically being choked out of the, the uh, booth here by whatever the smoke of what they're cooking in the back is. <coughs> I don't know if they can hear me back there, but guys, I'm coughing up here. <laughs> Must be dinner time somewhere. Uh, there is another article here by Dr. Mercola, and this group, is, uh, this particular one is, will boosting your vitamin D levels help prevent colds or not? But I am looking at the time that I have, and I don't know that we're going to be able to get through all of this. So I think that what I will do is uh, try to go ahead and get some of this in before I have to wrap it up for the day. Uh, as I am running myself out of time here again, I want to help. Want to thank Kelly from No More Victims Two so much for taking a minute and talking to us. Uh, you sounded great, Kelly. I know that when we spoke earlier, you were under the weather, so that hot tea and rest must have helped. And you did great, sounded excellent on our end, and I'm happy to get the word out to so many people. I also want to let you know we'll be hearing more from Kelly Ross and Sean, a.k.a. Logic, next week. I actually hope to see them sometime in the interim. And uh, if you are in that area, in the Springfield area, on the 21st, which is two weeks from today, and you want to go to the End of the World Party featuring Ghost Holler, Oh, I forgot the last half of their name. <laughs> Wonderful band. Uh, I'll get the information for you again. If I can post it, I will. But let me finish out my time here by reading this article by uh, Dr. Marcola. And again, I will get back to the article from Psychology Today, maybe next weekend, next Friday. And uh, keep those articles coming. I will, again, put them up, uh, read them, get to them as I can. It was actually a very busy b week in business. Uh, this fiscal climate, this fiscal shelf they keep telling us is going on. I'm sorry, fiscal cliff. Depends on what news source you go to them. Some of them are calling them something else. But um, maybe Mr. Wordsworth will be able to join us again next Friday, and Michael and I will delve into a little more depth as to just what exactly this fiscal cliff is and why you don't need a parachute or a hang glider to survive this. And again, how the uh, international community is looking at what America is doing next. Those, those darn Americans, what will they do next? <laughs> Will boosting your vitamin D levels help prevent colds or not? For the last 10 years, I've regularly reported on the benefits of vitamin D, especially for combating colds and flu. But according to a new study in the Journal of American Medicine Association, JAMA, J-A-M-A, J -A -M -A, vitamin D su supplements appear to be useless for reducing the number of severity of colds or upper respiratory infections. Interesting. The randomized controlled trial... How can you have a randomized? Okay. Led by Dr. David R. Murdoch of the University of Otago in New Zealand, included 322 healthy adults. Half of the participants were received 200,000 uh, international units or IUs of oral vitamin D3 at the onset of the study, followed by another mega dose of 200,000 IMs a month later. For the next 16 months, the vitamin D group received once monthly mega doses of 100,000 IUs of vitamin D. The control group received a placebo throughout. At the beginning of the study, the average vitamin D level for the treatment group was 29 NG per milliliter, which is still far below the optimal range. This is not surprising in light of the bizarre dosing regime that was prescribed. I was going to say, that is pretty bizarre. At the end of 18 months, um, the, the group averaged 50 NLMLs. Still, at the end of the trial, 593 incidents of upper respiratory infections had been reported among the vitamin D group, while the control group reported 611 colds, <laughs> a reduction of just 10%. So why didn't the vitamin D do a better job of reducing colds? Well, I don't think you're going to be a scientist to figure that out, folks. Placebo group had higher than normal vitamin D levels. Hmm. 
Dr. John Cannell, founder of the Vitamin D Council, first introduced the hypothesis that influenza is merely a symptom of vitamin D deficiency in the paper Epidemic Influenza and Vitamin D, published in the Journal of Epidi Epidemiology and Infection epidemiology and infection in 2006, followed up with another study published in the Virology Journal in 2008. In response to the feature study, Dr. Canal, Canal points out that 13 out of 161 placebo patients had levels below 20 NG slash ML, and only five of the 322 total patients had levels of less than 10 at the beginning of the study. In essence, to say that vitamin D supplementation is ineffective against upper respiratory infections is misleading due to the simple fact that the placebo group had relatively high levels of vitamin D, meaning uh, a mean average of 28 M N G M L initially compared to most of the population, and all but 13 patients had levels above 20 N G M L for most of the study, apparently sun exposure. Hence, the similarity in outcome between the two groups. Well, isn't that interesting? So the control group obviously did not, uh, the placebo group did not <laughs> plan for the intervention of the sun and natural vitamin D being formed. In his recent blog on the topic, Dr. Canal commented, compared to Dr. Murdoch's results, the result of another study in Lancet, our Lance, yeah, Lancet by Dr. Adrian Martinau and colleagues who, as a secondary endpoint, assessed upper respiratory tract infections over two months in patients given 2.5 milligrams, that is 100,000 IUs every two weeks for eight weeks for auxiliary treatment of TB. They found a six fold reduction in upper respiratory infections, but their English population was severely vitamin D deficient to begin with. In addition, two randomized controlled trials in children, one in Japan and one in Mongolia, both given daily vitamin D, showed a reduction in upper respiratory tract infections, but both studies had placebo arms. In the Mongolian study, the investigators measured vitamin D deficiency in the placebo arm, and it was much worse than in the JAM, JAMA study, a point the JAMA authors note. In yet another secondary endpoint in the randomized controlled trial, 2,000 IU a day of vitamin D in African Americans will, with initially low levels, reported a dramatic reduction in respiratory infections. Both the report and our groups rely I'm sorry, our group's reply, are free to read and download in its entirety. The figure below shows the reduction in reported colds and flu with daily doses of vitamin D for a two-year period. So the, thus, the JAMA study leaves us with a number of possibilities. Vitamin D does not help prevent the common cold. Monthly both doses of vitamin D do not help prevent the common cold, while daily or weekly dosing does. Of course, we already knew that. Levels at about 20 NG slash ML, which is 92% of the placebo group, are all that is required to lower infection rate. I am unaware of any study that used significant daily doses for an entire winter that was negative. Further evidence supporting the third possibility on his list in a 2009 analysis, which examined the association between vitamin D levels and recent upper, upper respiratory infections, URI, in nearly 19,000 subjects over the age of 12, recent URIs reported by 70% of participants with vitamin D levels of 30 or higher, 20% of, of participants with vitamin D levels between 10 and three, uh, 10 and 30, and 24% of participants with vitamin D levels below 10, okay? Results do not negate the benefits of sun exposure. Uh, and I think, folks, unfortunately, with that, I'm going to have to wrap it up because CC is here, and he is ready to spend with you the next hour or so of radio time live. I must go on to a staff meeting, and I look forward to finishing the article, maybe tying it into some other things in the future at another time. 
and also getting back i think i have maybe two more e unanswered unread emails that yet were sent to me you can actually send something to me if you like if you think it it uh, warrants attention and should be publicly known you can email it to me at c dot reading r e a d i n g at gmail doc uh, news i'm sorry c dot reading r e a d i n g news n e w s at gmail dot com and I also wish to add our normal disclaimer, which I don't know if you were able to hear, but uh, River West Radio does not endorse any of the opinions or views, albeit they will encourage them. So with that, I will sign off and have a wonderful week. We will talk to you next Friday. This is Caitlin Redding for Breaking Down the News. And for Michael Wordsworth, please have a pleasant evening and a good weekend.